Okay, well what we've got tonight on the machine is this was the original cylinder for the uh, BSA Fury engine that I'm doing. As you can see it has this ring groove around and part of this the, 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 th the problem with this engine is it's been part machined and here we have an example I've had to bore the, the casting here, fit the liners, clean up one or two bits and pieces but I've got to do this. Now I've never used a crest spindle in anger. Well I have once but only just after I finished making it and I've just sort of given this I'm letting it cut some air so that I can see what it's going to be like when it's finished. Here you can see the program in Pathpilot. I'll give you a, an isometric view. Looks a bit better. Quite a few cuts. Very conservative. I always am with my machining. I don't want to go mad with this thing because I, I get no second chances if I make a mistake. Especially with this, with it being castings. I think I need to bring the Z down a little because I can't really see where it's uh, sitting relative to that flange. There's not an awful lot of space on on the, the there's not an awful lot of room around the edge for this thing so I need to double check before I actually commit to cutting metal so that'll be it. Well I've checked everything and it seems to be fine spacing wise around the flange here it's not going to be very clear well you'll be able to see it forming uh, as I get, make progress with it I've just got to set my Z to zero and plug in the Cress. Uh, this cress, uh, I made the, all this stuff myself. It's not coupled into the panel, uh, which it would have been if I bought the spindle through Tomac and bought their adapter kit. The problem is, living in the UK, import duties are so uh, well, it cost so much to bring stuff in from the states that I'm reluctant to do so unless, uh, well, I'm reluctant to spend money on something that I can make rather than import for a start off. But paying duty on stuff and VAT as it enters just puts a price up beyond beyond reasonable in, in a lot of cases. It seems crazy to me to buy a, a spindle that's made in Germany, exported to America, re-imported back into the UK when I can buy one from Germany, get it shipped over here for relatively a reasonable amount of money. It wasn't that expensive and basically I can just plug it in and switch on when I want to anyway. I know what I'm doing with it, so that's the that's the score with it. So we'll get on, we'll crack on, and we'll show it when it's run. Well, as you can hear, we've got the crest on, so I just need to start the program, and we'll see what happens. Stand by for any crashes. You notice on here there is a status warning that's basically probably telling me about RPM. We'll see. And I'll let it come down so far and adjust the air. Because it's uh, not very, very good at the moment. But So point one of an inch or so to go. And there we go. So I think that's okay in terms of getting down to the work. And there we go. That's okay. Finishing off the whip. It 
looks a little deep to me for the amount that's got to go, so I'm going to stop it when I get round to it and double check everything. Okay, I've been back into the G code and had a good look at it, and basically, probably my error. It told it was a depth of 0.125, which I know that not to be correct, it's 0 0.0625 as a depth of the groove. I've probably been getting a width of it mixed up with the depth. But either way, I've been in and taken out quite a lot of the program. I'm going to rerun it and see what happens. It should only go to 0 0.0625, which is only about four passes, roughly two each step. So we'll see what happens. I'll cry if it goes wrong. Here we go. The, the steps after this first one should be half, half a millimetre each step. So we'll see what happens here. This is just repeating the previous couple of passes. There's two pass, passes to each step or each level. Here we go. Could probably increase our feed a little if I wanted to. Certainly I could have increased the plunge feed, but I don't like plunge feeding too rapidly, it's, it can create lots of problems. I'll get some air on there just to blow the cuttings away. And it'll get around to the start point, pick up and move across to the other side of the groove. Just here, and there it goes. And it's coming back down very slowly, and really ridiculously slowly, but at the same time, I don't want to break the cutter and I don't want to ruin the job. And there it goes back the other way. Again, it's fine milling by the looks of it, so it's going on the other side of the groove, from the far side, furthest away from us, and around it goes. And it'll get around to the start point, and it should hopefully just put half a mil cut on. We will see. And I've no doubt the compressor will kick in and spoil everything by making an awful lot of noise at any minute now. So here we go. Fingers crossed. Let's see. That should be down half a mil. Yeah, that's good, but that's not very deep cut, so that's fine. There's a compressor. Just like the sound of that there, I think some cuttings were getting caught under a nice slow to feed down a bit. There's not having any full actual uh, lubricant on there. That's better. That might help. I know that these cutters tend to clog up very quickly if you don't have coolant on when you're cutting aluminium. I think that's what I heard there. So that's one millimeter. When I get thrown to here, it's got two more cuts to do. The next cut takes a 1.5 millimeter, and then the one after that takes it just that tiny little bit to 1.6. Ah, there we go again. So it's not too deep a cut. That's great. Fourteen inches a minute that feed rate there, so it's, it's reasonable. You certainly couldn't feed it that fast using 5,000 RPM maximum single speed. So it's, it's looking good. And it's almost there.
yellow go again. One last. That's it. Around again. Good. Be the last cut, yeah. There's very little cut on there, very little 0.1 of a mil. And we'll just see what that's gone down to. If you look on here, it says, well, it's just gone off the screen, Z minus 0 0.0625, which is just exactly where I wanted it. Oh, really clear for that little program, didn't take long to do. Fortunately, I realized it was going to make a mistake. And corrected things, and it was easily corrected. The nice thing about Pathfinder, you can dive in there and sort things out fairly quickly. And one more. That's okay, I think. It's going to have to be an O-ring fitted in there, should be okay anyway. Because that should be it. It is in fact. You can just see in here oh, where my thumbnail is. There's a tiny, not a ding, but it, the, the cutter actually dropped into the work a little, and I don't know why because I've just been through the G court. And the deepest it can go is minus 0.625, so there must have been a glitch somewhere uh, that caused that. However, it should be able to uh, cope with that, I'm sure. It'll be fine once there's a, an O ring in there, it'll cope with it. It's not more than about three or four thousandths of an inch deep. Um, it could also be, you know, uh, filled in slightly with some, uh, some epoxy putty or something like this. But uh, anyway, it's just one of those annoying little things.